Good morning, I'm Michela Matta from the Gastroenterology and Digestive Endoscopy Unit of Arnes Civico in Palermo. This presentation was done during the WISE hands on training in 2024 in Seoul, in South Korea, in the presence of the Professor So and the WISE organization. Today we will speak about the linear reverse anatomy uh, of the pancreatobiliary system. I will start to describe the pancreatobiliary anatomy from the stomach, then from the bulb, and from the second portion of the duodenum, with a special focus of the uh, US anatomy of the major papilla. And for each station, I will try to cover the following topics topographic anatomy, US delineation, and uh, US anatomy. First of all, how we find the pancreatobiliary structures. We have to be in the proper location and know the structure that we have to evaluate. We need help of our landmarks by following the structure that we know. And we can also use the Doppler for the vascular differentiation. The landmarks of the US delineation from the stomach are the aorta, the left cross of the diaphragm, the celiac trunk and its branches, and the superior mesenteric artery and splenic vessels. We need to reach the edgy junction passing through the mouth and the esophagus and we need to be gentle, do not push in case of resistance and take in mind that our instrument has an oblique view. And the angle of the view will be slightly different depending on the manufacturer model. As you see in the fluoroscopic picture, as we advance the scope to the edgy junction, the transducer is usually facing anteriorly, look at, looking at the left lobe of the liver. Then you need to curve to turn clockwise to let the transducer facing the aorta posteriorly. Looking posteriorly, we will serve the aorta, the celiac trunk, and the superior mesenteric artery. We need to distinguish the crews of the diaphragm. This step is extremely important to define the proper location of the, and the boundary of the structures, for example, a lymph nodes, so to distinguish if it's a thoracic, mediastinal, or abdominal node. Using soft movement, then we need to follow the trifurcation of the celiac trunk that will divide into the lefty gastric artery, splenic artery, and common hepatic artery. It's possible to visualize the superior mesenteric artery, but this is not always imaged simultaneously because they are not always in the same plane. So from this position, by pushing the scope slightly and move down the big wheel, we will reach the pancreas. It's important to know that the pancreas is in our black position with the body and tail in a more cranial location if compared to the head. And of course, the body tail are in the left sides of our body near the left kidney and the spleen. It lays behind the stomach in a retroperitoneal position. So we need to uh, look, uh, to continue to look posteriorly and after reach the uh, pancreatic parenchyma, of the neck and body, we need to do a clockwise rotation and upward with a small uh, and progressive withdrawal of the scope to fully interrogate the body tail. But as we know, we need to interpret our US images uh, at this point. In fact, near the transducer, we will have the pancreatic body and the splenic vessels are the landmarks to follow. Splenic artery is usually imaged uh, on, our, on the proximal side uh, of the transducer with a round shape and not compressed, and the splenic vein is uh, imaged at the distal side and is possible to compress. Color Doppler can help to identify the splenic artery and vein, and we can add also the power Doppler to be much more sure. So continuing the rotation and the withdrawal with gentle upwards will trace the body tail and will face also the kidney that is anatomically behind uh, the pancreas and so at the bottom of our image. 
this is the landmark of the transition between the body uh, to the tail of the pancreas. And continuing, finally, we will reach the spleen and the adenal gland. If we want to summarize, we see the liver and moving clockwise, we will find the aorta. Advancing the scope further, as soon as the cruise disappears, we have to start to look uh, for the celiac trunk and the takeoff of the celiac trunk at the sides of the aorta. Distally, uh, we can see also the superior mesenteric artery. If we advance the scope further and push down the up-down wheel, the neck of the pancreas is coming into the view, and if we torque clockwise, a little bit of the body of the pancreas is coming into the view and we will trace the MPD. At the bottom of the screen, below the pancreas, the left kidney is coming into the view and continuing we will see its plane. On the left of our side of the screen, we will fully interrogate the tail of the pancreas by turning clockwise and counterclockwise until the organ disappears from one side to another. Then we will approach the left adrenal gland with its typical shape like a seagull. In this clinical case, we are searching also a lesion in the paraortic space between the aorta and the spleen. As you can see uh, following the structures, we are able to manage this hypoechoic lesion with a round shape that the histology was compatible with one normal. Now we have to uh, turn back to our initial position by doing a counterclockwise rotation and pushing the scope uh, and using the big wheel upward and we will follow the splenic vein uh, that uh, coming into the portal confluence. Uh, portal vein is now visible and the uh, careful rotation of the endoscope we can observe the body, neck and head of the pancreas. So our position will be oriented in the, on the right, looking posteriously, and we have to find this US view with the contextual vision of the splenic vein, the superior mesenteric vein, and if possible also the inferior mesenteric vein coming into the portal vein on the bottom right. From this position, we will interrogate the head of the pancreas, the Wilson that is going to the hampularis region. And we will see the kissing sign that is a romantic US uh, image gave by the contact between the Wilson coming from the body and from the ampulla. From this position, when we look at the portal vein, if we do upwards adding a small withdrawal, we will reach the hepatic hilum, uh, where the common bile duct is on the bottom of the screen. This is the clinical case of before. Now we will start from the liver to reach our lesion near the horta. We see the left lobe with segment 2 and segment 3, and following the left portal vein by moving clockwise and pushing the scope and moving down the big wheel, we will arrive at the pilotic hilum. With movement of clockwise and counterclockwise, we will arrive at the portal confluence and the pancreatic parenchyma is coming into the view. On the left, we will see the superior mesenteric vein. Following the splenic vein, moving clockwise, the body tail is easily detected and continuing with the clockwise rotation, we will cross the kidney and the left adrenal gland. And then, with soft movement of back and forth and with drawing, we will arrive at our lesion in the paraortic space. After finishing the, to explore the stomach, we can move to the ludinum, but it's important to see the gallbladder from the hand room. In my personal experience, I always look at the US uh, when I'm dirigeing to the bulb, and I just take few seconds to find a good US view and simulate a gallbladder drainage, because we have to remember that the position and size of the gallbladder are not always standard, so the movement can, be, can change. 
And in this case, we have a dilated CBD with, and multiple stones inside a sclerotrophic gallbladder. From the dental bulb, the main landmark is the portal vein. We will trace also the CBD, the MPD, and a small portion of the gallbladder. As you can see in the floral picture, the scope long position let us to inspect the biliopancreatic structure from below. It can be compared to the position of the ring gymnastics. This is our UDK key during the Olympic Games in 1988 in Seoul. As a result, the structures are upside down and mirrored. A good example to show this is the view of the pytic hilum from the bulb compared to that one from the stomach. As we have seen from the stomach, the liver is on the bottom right of the screen and the hepatic artery is closer to the transducer and the CBD is distally. From the bulb, the images are upside down, as we said, and mirrored, cause the liver on the upper left side of the screen, CBD is closer to us, to our transducer, and the hepatic artery is more distal. From this station, our instrument will be in a long position. We will fully interrogate the head of the pancreas, the bile ducts, and the landmarks will be the portal vein. And we, know, uh, we need also to not apply too much pressure on the tip of the scope because we will compress the biliary structures. So we need to uh, be gentle and to reduce the compression with the big wheel. In a clockwise rotation, we will move distally to the major papilla with a fully visualization of the CBD and the MPD. By torching court clockwise and adding a soft upward, we indeed move to the hepatic hilum and to the intrahepatic. Endoscopically, we push the scope down in the stomach, passing through the pylorus, looking at the apex of the bulb, and switching to the US view. First landmark uh, we have to look for is the portal vein and the CBD is also near to us. By touching clockwise we investigate the head of the pancreas and the wheel swing is coming into the view. Then moving counterclockwise with thought movement back and forth we deeply detect the inferior vena cava and few lymphadenopathies in this case. And by touching counterclockwise we generally go uh, to the pyrotic hilum and the sixth duct is coming into the view. We need also to visualize the portal triad and measure the CBD that in our clinical case is 13 mm. Again, uh, by touching clockwise we can trace the CBD from the hilum to the head of the pancreas. Below the CBD we can trace the MPD that moving to the ampulla. And in this clinical case we detect a solid dishomogeneous lesion of, of the head of the pancreas and a cystic component in the groove area. To study the antenate process, we push the scope into the second portion of the duodenum, and following the shortening maneuver, we look for our landmarks. The first one is the major papilla, then the aorta, the mesenteric vessels, the common bile duct and the MPD. We advance the instrument into the duodenum and we draw slowly under endoscopic guidance until we see the major papilla. The up down wheel is moved up and rotate clockwise and counterclockwise uh, while slowly we draw the scope as needed to see the inferior vena cava and the horta on the left part of the screen. From this position, the pancreas is adjacent on the right side of the screen. Gently pulling back the scope, we can fully interrogate the uncinate process while touching clockwise and counterclockwise until the organ disappears from one side to the other. If we keep on withdrawal scope, the PD and CBD are coming into the view. CBD is near to the transducer and the wisdom is a little bit deeper. Counterclockwise, we, uh, we uh, detect the CBD and clockwise the PD. In this clinical case, we can appreciate also a small solid lesion of the huncinate process, partially compressing the, compressing the CBD.
Similarly, in this clinical case, we interrogate the uncinate process and we trace the Wilson coming into the papilla. Moving counterclockwise, we will see the CBD and avoiding too much pressure on the tip, it was possible to see some hyperechoic image, images with shadowing inside the CBD compatible with stones. Continuing the withdrawal, we will evaluate the entire bile duct system also in the medium and proximal portion of the biliary tree. From the second portion of the duodenum, we can study the major papilla in a very detailed fashion, just looking for our landmarks that are the mucosal folds, the duodenal uh, muscularis propria, the CBD, and the MPD. To better evaluate the papilla, we need to use the balloon and inject some saline solution inside the lumen to distend the duodenal fold and aspirate the remaining hair. We need to be gentle and use a really soft movement of uh, clockwise and counterclockwise. And in this case, we see the prior papilla that presented an enlarged aspect, stopping the common bile duct and the main pancreatic duct. And if we see the PD moving counterclockwise, we see the CBD, and returning clockwise, we are back to the MPD. The, this lesion of the papilla didn't pass over the muscular propria in our case. This is another endoscopic and USB of an ampullary adenoma with multiple stones inside the CBD. Now, just analyzing some clinical points. When passing through the cardia and you find some resistance, think about the yadal hernia. Good suction of air is extremely important to deflate the stomach too. From the bulb, sometimes it happens that you are applying too much pressure with the tip of the scope and the thin, normal CBD is hard to find. So try to relax the tip and the CBD will show up. Be careful when advancing the scope from the bulb to the second portion of the duodenum. This is the most frequent site of perforation during diagnostic linear US. So pay attention, especially in, in, in special conditions like duodenal infiltration by pancreatic head cancer. When you are looking at the Huntsinet process and you are continuously and your scope continuously slip back, try to deflate the stomach. First, because as we do during the ERCP, hair is in the stomach makes our scope position stable. In case you have a poor visualization of the major papilla, try to find a good balance between the water injection and balloon and also aspirate the hair from the lumen. In conclusion, we can say that anatomy comes first, then U.S. anatomy, and tracing structure and identify the origin is the basis of a good U.S. technique using the chasing methods. The correlation between the three-dimensional anatomy and U.S. images is always difficult and requires continuing training in U.S. So thank you, Professor So and the WISE organization for the opportunity to uh, be part of the WISE. So, Kansa Hamida. Thank you very much for your attention.